you know, as we find ourselves surrounded by reality, which is too extreme for fantasy, we all need to find an escape. Don't judge me. Like my buddy Nelson Abbott's books. Oh, wait a minute. <laughs> These, Freedom's Forge, stories about all of the shenanigans that took place in the Revolutionary War. Or if you have a short attention span, try his Too Cool for Earth series. It's about colonists in space. There's a monkey called Bobby Bananas. He's not evil, just kind of secretive. Like everyone else in this story. <laughs> what are you gonna do? He's also hairy. I kind of like a shaved monkey myself, but not in this context. What was I talking about? Oh yeah, you can get the first Too Cool for Earth story for just 99 cents. Go to abixrealms.com. Links are in the Meat Gazer box. Meat Gazer! What's going on, you quim queefers? Terrence Pop here, redonkulous.com. Bad Pop showed up today <laughs> because I have some bad news for the YouTube algorithm. Yeah, you might as well, you know, throttle me now because this video is going to be chocked full of offensive material. And to my two dozen hate subs, go ahead and click the dislike now. Oh, that's right. It doesn't work anymore. Wah! And that has nothing to do with our duly elected commander in queef. <laughs> Most popular president ever. 81 million scoops of ice cream. Did me pointing that out just piss you off? <laughs> I direct your attention to the board. That is what this episode is all about. We're gonna go down a list of all words and phrases that historically have pissed off the bearers of the vagine. And now that it's current year, we're probably gonna piss off a whole bunch of biological males as well. Screen five. <laughs> but there is some good news. Those dudes are good at sports. <laughs> oh my God. So pour yourself a menagerie, dudes, and hopefully you have a nice glass like mine. Big shout out to the dude who sent us these. Thank you. With that being said, get ready to open a whole can of worms. Yeah. Before we get started, I want to direct your attention to redonkulous.com slash donate. If you like this content, please consider donating or becoming a member. Your support helps to keep us independent from our corporate overlords. Now let us say it together, but let us begin. Let's be honest here. It doesn't take a lot of imagination to piss these people off. In fact, you can achieve that with one word and it's got two letters. And those letters are N-O, no. <laughs> oh. You're upset already? <laughs> Cry me a river, build a bridge, and get the f over it. How dare you! And this one by itself is a conundrum. I can't believe I just said that word. Because the ladies actually want you to stand up to them. They respect a man who has boundaries and will say no. But if you're a beta <laughs> in the friend zone, you just open that can of worms. And I'm sorry, she's gonna suck on all of those. Except yours. Screen five. <laughs> Bottom line is this. Women just are not used to hearing this word. They have been coddled from birth to current year, and you know what that means. When you're used to getting special privileges, equality, well, that seems like oppression. Let, let, let's pretend that's not true. Yeah. <laughs> Next time a woman wants you to sacrifice your dignity on the altar of a gene, you look her in the eye and go, No. If you're an alpha, this could turn into a bail situation, if you know what I mean. And that stands for bang and immediately leave, screen five. <laughs> but if you're a beta, you better hunker in the bunker because there's incoming. Phrase number two, <laughs> you're not listening. Oh, did you feel that? The room just got colder. Women, they pride themselves on being good listeners, if you know what I mean. But any dude that's been around the block as much as I have, you know the deal. 
Most of the time, they're not listening to you. They're simply waiting for their turn to speak. How many times has this happened to you gentlemen? Go ahead, pour yourself the menagerie. I'll wait. You're actually opening up to a woman, which we all know is a mistake, screen five. <laughs> you finished telling your story? Or maybe not. Something that you said triggers a memory in her and she says, well, something similar happened to me. <laughs> well, shut up. And they start the stories usually the same way. <laughs> Well, if it makes you feel better. And if you dare interrupt them during this flow, which quite literally is probably happening during their flow, and you say, honey, I don't think you're listening. <coughs> and number three, which is often confused with mansplaining, it's also an offshoot of number two. You don't know what you're talking about. I'm gonna tell you this right now, dudes. If she has a baseball bat full of gutter nails, just start running now. You're about to become acquainted with her Jose Canseco bat. Please tell me you didn't pay money for that. Ooh, that's it. But to be fair. Uh, to be fair. To be fair. Oh, to be fair. Over half of the liberal ladies under 30 have a mental illness of some type. So they quite literally don't know what they're talking about. Wow. And you know what they say about facts? They don't care about your feelings. <laughs> Regardless, they don't want to hear it, and if you're the one to say it, you better batten down the hatches. With that being said, we're gonna park, stop it, and neutral slam it into the next one. I do not know why so many ladies out there have an aversion to this word, but it is hilarious. You say this one word, they'll react like how I react when you say munging. <laughs> oh God. We all know what that word is, and cakes wouldn't be the same without it. That word is moist. That'll be the last time I hear that word coming out of your mouth. I wonder if these ladies get triggered when they go to the store to pick up food for their fur babies. I've devoted a lot of time thinking about this crazy subject because you know I really don't sleep. And around 3 a.m. I had a thought. <laughs> I finally figured out why this word is so triggering. Because most of these people, they have already hit the wall or they're speeding towards it. And this word is kind of like locking down a good man. It's not gonna happen, screen five. <laughs> Once they've arrived in box wine and cat land, The only thing drier is the litter box. <laughs> and if they're into that real kinky stuff, there'll be piss and poo poo in there. <laughs> I think it's funnier with the word poo poo. <laughs> <laughs> All right, ladies, I know I just pissed off a whole bunch of you, but that brings us to the next one on the list. Number five, honey, honey, it'll be okay. You just need to calm down because that always works. And any dude out there stupid enough to use those two words knows exactly what I'm talking about. What do you mean, calm down? That's so gay. Homo point assessed. But we can't help it as dudes. It's a knee-jerk reaction. Have you ever come across one of these ladies? One that likes to clap every time she uses a word or a syllable? Calm the f*** down. I bet it ain't me, I bet it ain't me, I bet it ain't me, ah! You're clearly way too used to get in your own way, and <laughs> it needs to stop. And number six, and it's actually a play off number five, stop being so emotional. Oh my god. You might as well go jump on Noah's Ark because the Sea of Tears is going to flood the land. And ladies, don't forget to bring both of your dogs and that convenient jar of peanut butter. But I'm just going to be honest, dudes. Don't say these words. They're pointless. You might as well ask gravity to stop working. It's never going to happen. <laughs> we all used to be accustomed to this image, the yin and the yang. Two opposites coming together to make the whole, <laughs> so I can f*** it, screen five. <laughs> Bottom line, men are logical and women are emotional. When you put those two together, they can actually balance themselves out. 
And when they introduce little people into the equation, they can produce the same balance. But when you take away the logic, well, the statistics for fatherless homes prove my point. So ladies, I hate to say it, stop being so emotional. <sighs> And that statement is usually followed by this question, which brings on the rapid onset of fisticuffs. Are you on your period? If you are correct, it is almost guaranteed it will trigger an explosion. Now with that being said, there are women out there that flat out admit it, and you should probably keep them around. Yes, I'm on my period. I'm not sleeping well, I'm grumpy, and I'm not cooking, so order in. Gotcha. <laughs> so take the hint and order some Chinese food. Get the extra egg rolls, because you and I both know she's not touching yours. Unless you're one of those dudes who likes to get your red wings. And I'm not talking about the hockey team. God. But if you're with this woman for a long period of time, take notes. And when that special time comes about, be absent. Nobody likes to invite Aunt Flo to the family reunion, I'm just saying. And number eight, and this one harkens back to number two. Did you hear what I said? Now she's on her period, that's insta-fight. Just give her some water and uh, don't feed her after midnight. Unless you're feeding her my doll, which is surrounded by a piece of cheese, cause you know, is like that. Are you trying to get any medication like I'm a dog? Well, did it work? Yeah. Oh, there you go. That's fucked up. <laughs> Number nine, and this sucks if you have the franken beans or the fish taco. And why? It's the perfect non-apology and we all use it. You're having a big blowout. She's reading you the riot act and explaining all the stuff you did to piss her off. You pick up a beer, you look her in the eye and you say, terribly sorry you feel that way. Oh look, Space Ghost just came on. You just didn't apologize and insinuated <laughs> She cannot control her emotions. We all know how rationally they respond to things like that, right? You just know that you're dealing with a rock solid pillar of sanity as you're dodging cookware. Nothing proves you're not crazy beyond a shadow of a doubt like acting crazy. <coughs> Speaking of totally rational responses, that leads us into number 10. And if your shot glass is empty like mine, you might want to refill it. We've all been tempted to ask this question, but precious few of us are prepared for the consequences. Ladies in current year are surgically grafted to their phones. And this, this is Satan's gift to infidelity. And if your woman is like all the other women I've ever known, they're on that thing all the time. Number 10, can I see your phone? Now, a quarter of these women will hand their phone over, no problem. The other 25%, they'll hand it over, but they will be pissed. The remaining 50%, well, <laughs> I hope you're up to speed on your blame and shame deflections. You are going to be called every nasty name in the book and probably some you never heard before. And the blame and shame is going to be on target to keep you from doing that. Now, if they react this way, you really don't need to look at their phone. You know the deal. They still have a Tinder profile. They're still swiping right, and they don't give a sh where you are. You could be in the goddamn room. But, dudes, there's one thing you need to be prepared for when this happens. They are going to pull the privacy card and slam it down right on top of the deck. And if you do not have an Uno reverse card handy, you're going to fall for it. They have two bold face lies, two shells, and the double barrel shotgun. I can't believe you violated my privacy like this. I would never do that to you. Bullshit. One, you're not violating anyone's privacy by asking to look at their phone. And number two, they're getting the sausage service from someone else. And they've definitely already gone through your phone because they want to justify what they're already doing. Damn it, he's right. Well said. And if they look through your phone and find nothing, it pisses them off even more. Women are creatures of psychological projection. If they're cheating on you, it must be because you're cheating on them. Right? Wrong! But they're going to look through your phone and find nothing. After that, there's only really two options. One, they have to accept the fact they're a cheating hooer and 
We can't have that. So we go into option two. Kick the rationalization hamster into Mach 3. Just because it's not on his phone doesn't mean it's not happening. After all, I have a gut feeling. He's just better at hiding it than I am. <laughs> Number 11. What do you want? If you start a conversation with this phrase over the phone, <laughs> watch the f out. Now I know there's dudes out there like, what? Pop, that doesn't make any sense. Just pay attention. You want to know why it doesn't make any sense? Because men have actually embraced this whole equality thing. We can pick up the phone and answer it with, what do you want? When we know it's one of our friends. And you want to know what happens? Nothing. They just tell us what they want. But ladies, they don't need a reason to call you. They just want to check in on you and see if you're doing okay. So if you answer the phone and the person calling is a lady and you say, what do you want? Get ready for the tear machine. And yes, they're crocodile tears because after all, <laughs> she does want something and that's the best way to get it. But it really only works on younger dudes who are still thinking with the little head. So to be fair, to be fair, to be fair, to be fair, you're going to hear less of this as you get older. And thank God for that, let us all drink. And number 12, this happens a lot if you're dumb enough to talk politics with a wham man. They will say some sh** to you that is completely false. And then you'll respond with, did your friends tell you that? And let's be honest ladies, in the age of social media, you're going to hear this one a lot. So either research for yourself or get used to it. If your only source of news is occupied Democrats, you're going to be disappointed quite a bit. Screen five. <laughs> hey, don't get mad at me. I'm not the one accepting facts from a lie factory. Number 13 and 14 go together like peaches and cream. But don't you dare try to taste it because it tastes like poo poo. Ladies, you're going to hear these two things a lot if you're out shopping with your man. One. I can't afford that. Two, you can't afford that. One of you is trying to be budget conscious. The other one wants a sack with somebody else's name on it. Ooh. And I'm sorry, ladies, but that's all it is. Screen five. Uh -huh. It's a sack that you keep your shit in and somehow its value goes up depending upon the different name that's stamped on it. That is straight up stupid. And any man who shelled out that kind of dough just to break off a piece, you're even dumber. But still not as dumb as the person who asked for the sack in the first place. Especially if you want the sack without touching my sack, screen five. <laughs> you got to be careful how you touch those ladies because uh, some of you are tickle artists and you don't even realize it. You think he's squirming because it feels good. In reality, he's just trying to get away. Every dude treats a BJ from a new provider like a game of press your luck. Big bucks, big bucks, no whammies, and stop it, Tickles. And we're both asleep by 8.30. Now, number 15 and 16, they also go together. Two words that'll end any relationship 99% of the time. And if you use them together, woo, <laughs> that's a nuke. Word one, bitch. Word two, liar. You can combine them both to get a better effect and call her a lying bitch. But you better get ready for the fallout, have your tennis shoes on, and get ready to run. Especially if you combine those two words with additional bonus words. You know, lying slute, effing slute, sluting whore, and the pinnacle of prickery, lying, quantahaha, a biacha. And you? Well, I hope you picked out a good Kenmore refrigerator box because they're more roomy. Or you can live out of your car and eat off the dollar menu at McDonald's. Do we still have to use that clip? <laughs> I'm glad you all out there enjoy laughing at my pain. But let's face it, that's why I do this. And if you're angry, number 17, do I look like a mind reader to you? And women will come back with one of two excuses. Number one, well, you should know. Do I really have to explain to you the concept of me not being a mind reader? And number two, well, I told you, you just weren't listening. That is a particularly good one that works on some dudes. Because let's be honest, if it wasn't for selective hearing, we probably wouldn't have any at all. Just like Democrats, if they didn't have double standards, they wouldn't have any at all, screen five. <laughs> But 
In current year, ladies, you really should not be using that excuse. You are so focused on your phones, the only thing you hear is, check please. That's your signal to claim you left your wallet at home, right? <laughs> because after all, a real man pays for the meal and the date. And after he does, you get the next one. I don't owe him anything, right? Technically, you could say you owe him for half the meal. Unless he wants to take out something and trade. And if that's not on the table, well, that whole equality thing, it just went out the window. <laughs> Numbers 18 and 19 go together because they hear one and they infer the other. When it comes to ladies, inference is infamous. Because every dude has had the argument and they said the following. I didn't say that. Well, it's not what you said. It was your tone. These are the ladies that pick fights over a missing comma in a text message or a dream. You ask them, is that what you're going to wear? But their ears hear the following, you're fat. But if that woman is your daughter and you say the exact same thing, it's going to get dicey from there. And why? Well, they know what we mean. We're just trying to be nice. Because we're asking, are you really going to wear that? And they hear, you're dressed like a whore. And in this respect, you're probably 100% correct, Space Ghost. <laughs> but this is actually where this misconception comes from. Teenage girls going out on a date have heard this from their parents. Parents like to say it that way because it's easier than stating, I hope you're charging by the hour, screen five. <laughs> they take that stigma and carry it with them into adulthood. The problem is the relationships are totally different. A man is not going to speak to his woman the same way he talks to his daughter. For our kids, we'll sugarcoat some stuff. For our women, not so much. Because any dude knows if you sugarcoat stuff long enough, you're going to get diabetes. And relationships with diabetes don't end well. Because every time you actually tell them the truth, they go into insulin shock. <laughs> Bottom line, ladies, if you're gaining weight, we'll tell you. Or we'll beat her on the bush, figuratively and literally, until you take the hint. I don't know any dude who likes to go south of 8 Mile if he has to put the mud flaps over his head. <coughs> and number 20. This one doesn't usually result in a blow-up fight, but it will irritate them. You have plans. You have to be somewhere at a certain time. You look at her and go, are you ready yet? The additional word yet proves the fact that you have waited beyond your patience. And women, God bless them, they pick up on that shit, especially if you drive off and leave them home. <laughs> that is the sledgehammer technique. It's not the preferred method, but I've used it a few times myself. But I will tell you this in all honesty, the women I did that to were never late again. Number 21, and guess what? <laughs> now you're old enough to drink. And because that's true, we really shouldn't have to invite your mom. Dudes that make the classic mistake of saying, I do, you're going to see this one a lot. It's your wedding, but her mother wants to come along and have a hand in all of the planning. And why? Because she's a narcissistic wench. Her and the sperm donor aren't paying for stuff to be generous. Let's just say that now. She's paying for it because she wants a say. She wants to live vicariously through her daughter and have the big knockout wedding that she never had. It's very important. And why? Well, that tends to happen when you get knocked up in the back of a pickup truck by the captain of the football team. You know your head game isn't up to snuff when you know who he is, but he still tries to give you a fake name. Screen five. <laughs> I had a great time, Todd. Todd? Who's Todd? I'm Bendy Dick Cummins Snatch. Your name's literally on your jersey. That's uh, a misprint. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not sure how we got here, but it's too funny we're leaving it in. And funny enough, that's how you wound up being an offspring of a single mother. <laughs> Let me know. But removing the mother from the planning duties isn't going to piss him off as much as the next one. Number 22. And if you're not prepared for this explosion, never say the following words. Because no matter how good her relationship is with her mother, there's always a form of animosity there. So, if you're having a tiff with your significant other and you say the following words, you're acting like your mother. <laughs> you are so f***ed. 
even if you think her mother is hot for her age, I had to throw that in there, and you say it in a nice way, she's going to respond with, what do you mean by that? And even if you deflect, it's still going to be uncomfortable and it's probably not going to work anyway. Worst case scenario, she's going to think you want to give a reach around to the mother. And if they look like this, well, I can't blame you, space ghost. Number 23, and this one depends upon the woman that you're with. If you're with a modern woman, one that is strong and independent, this will spark up a fight. It's a simple question. We ask it out of instinct because we're hungry. Hey honey, what's for dinner? Oh, that's right, fight. It doesn't matter that she worked four to six hours at the salon while you were working 16 hours at the construction site. How dare you expect her to prepare food for you after she worked such a hard day. <laughs> Newsflash, ladies. We are not expecting a multi-course meal when we ask you what's for dinner. It could be a fried bologna sandwich with mustard and cheese. We don't care. We're still eating it. When did it become strong and independent to treat your partner like a piece of shit? Reconsider your life. There are millions of women out there who are being conditioned by poisonous media. You idolize a bunch of biatches who brag about not cooking or cleaning for their man. You let me know how that works out for you in the long run. You want to know where all the good men went far away from you. They just ate a sandwich that was prepared by their woman and they're getting a BJ for dessert. I always say, <laughs> what's one without the other? <laughs> Honey. <laughs> Last one on the list. And this one usually comes up around food. Do you really think you should be eating that? Unless there's a food allergy involved, we are saying those words because you are pulling the pin on the fat grenade and we're trying to hold off the explosion. But those words will usually spark off a different kind of explosion. <laughs> F my life. Bottom line, ladies, your currency in the dating market goes away even if you don't spend it. Youth, beauty, and fertility, and you are born with all of those. Now, nah, well, some of you aren't. Oh God, why didn't anybody tell me? <laughs> but beauty and a body that looks like a melted candle seldom go together. So if you attract a high value man with those things, it is in your best interest to keep them. And if a man invests in you, he's going to want to protect that investment. Men typically don't say things to be mean. We just say things to be logical. And you'll notice I didn't apply everything on this list to all women. Just most of you. Screen five. <laughs> but to be fair, to be fair, to be fair, most can be 51%, which is the baseline of all of the cash and prizes you get in a divorce. So before you chalk up any of your hurt feelings to male privilege, remember that. So I know there are women that watch this show. So I want input from men and women. What are some of the things that you've said that pissed off your significant other? Put it in the comments. And if they're good enough, we'll put them all together and make another episode. Because that's how we roll around here. With that being said, I'm done with you. Be gone. <laughs> you post that, not even the video, the title card pissed off isn't screaming at the f Instagram account for six weeks waiting for a response and then finally I responded I'm like did you watch the video no yeah there's this thing called context <laughs> um, it's, it's a joke and it was a personal story that was being told it was pretty funny <laughs> whatever you're a racist <laughs> you think what Mexican women are crazy f you <laughs> like so you're trying to convince me that Mexican women aren't crazy by, by, crazy. by, by acting crazy